Commissioner, Kevin Noah Smith, uh, Nathan Diesel, and Michael. And uh, we're going to do uh, talk about what we presented or made in uh, SOLIDWORKS today for Group 2, and we work on Engine 12. And I work in the camshaft small gear, Noah worked on the piston pin and gun pin, Nathan did the crankshaft, and Michael did the connection rod. So our uh, cam I did the camshaft, and you can see it's a, a bunch of parts put together. It's a timing gear, two cam lobes, and then on the back side you can see a, a black uh, hinge, metal hinge, and a small pin. Uh, I started off with the cam lobes. I defined the total length of the top and the total width, and then also once I got that made, I extruded it and then extruded these two circles. And uh, this is one of the cam lobes. I don't know if it's a little different, but made with the same process. The next part I made was this hinge. Uh, I started off by with this side view and I sketched it out and saw works and extruded it, mirrored it to the other side, and then I connected it together using a circular arc, extruded that down, and then finally made that little black uh, hinge coming off the uh, little black curve coming off the back end and extruded that. Uh, these are the camshaft rod. The rod is everything's connected to and is uh, bounded around. And also a small, the small pin that the uh, black hinge is, that goes through the black hinge next through the camshaft rod. And those are pretty simple, easy to make. Just a circle with a uh, flange for the camshaft rod and then again a circle with a little top on the uh, ends, small pin. Uh, well, uh, next part I made was timing shift, timing gear. This was a pretty easy make. I used it, um, SOLIDWORKS gear book toolbox, measured the top of it and counted the teeth and you got that up diamond pitch and created the, the gear. I extruded these uh, six little pieces out of the uh, middle of it and then added these details like the little triangles, the uh, circles at the top here, and the tiny mark at the bottom. And finally, I had to make this small gear. Again, I used the SOLIDWORKS tool, gear toolbox and then I created these features like these uh, extrusions at the top and the bottom and also these little flanges on the inside, as you can see by this section view uh, uh, created. And overall, I, I made the small gear and the overall camshaft put it together, and that was not part of, of the uh, of this project. <coughs> and now uh, Noah's gonna talk about the uh, piston heads. Okay, uh, I had the piston head and the pin, and I don't have the pin in right here, but See there. Um, so this is a front and back part of my view. What I started off doing is uh, sketch this part right here and then I revolve that around and then right here on the bottom part I revolve this part and uh, drew um, parallel lines right here going across. Instead of revolving the entire part uh, all the way around I found that to be easier. Um, and then you can't see right here, but uh, right here, uh, I drew um, this part and extruded that. Of course, drew my uh, circle right here and cut that out with an extruder cut. And then right here, um, I extruded that out and then from the top view, uh, I cut um, along with uh, along with the revolve from this part right here. Uh, this is my pen. Um, I sketched it out and then revolved it. Uh, how much do I have? Um, this is a underneath view right here where uh, um, so uh, First I drew this extrude coming out right here, right here. and then I cut extru uh, extruded cut uh, a little bit more in all right in here, it's hard to see, but, uh, and then I drew these two alongside the uh, extrude that I already had and uh, extruded those and that's the side view of it. And Uh, I was in charge of doing the uh, crankshaft. The hardest part for me was actually doing all the measurements because it had a lot of wonky geometry in it. Um, 
the here's a, a front view of it of like the whole length. It looks like it would be it's one part and it looked like it'd be a lot of, a lot more complicated than it was, but it ended up just being a bunch of small cylinders and uh, a couple other screws and cuts. Uh, when measuring, the hardest thing to measure was probably this big arc, and I had to figure out how the angle at least stuck out to the um, center here. And after I found that, all I had to do was just extrude the top part for that part, and everything else is basically cylinders and or attached to um, a cylinder. The uh, one of the hard uh, here's a bottom view of the whole thing. It also had some. Um, there's a key here on the end here. It has some uh, slots here for other parts to slide in, and then it has some. Um, threads on the inside of one of the holes in this end and on the end there. One of the hardest parts to actually model for this whole thing, it took me a while to figure out how to do this, is this little slanted uh, edge here. The trick to it is it's out of slant, but the whole thing is rounded all the way over to the other side, as you kind of see in this lower one. It's completely round. And uh, at first I fiddled, out, uh, fiddled around with just doing a cut and then trying to revolve like a, it's a shape on top of that, but it was too tall or it didn't look right. And after a while, just looking at the part itself, um, I looked at the part itself, I realized that I can cut like this kind of angle shape here and then I revolved it to where it was 90 degrees with this line and just extruded it all the way back to the cylinder. And uh, that figured that out, it took me a while to get around that. And then after that, the last thing I ran into was this little fillet between the uh, top cylinder and then the, the flat edge here. And on the part, it's kind of like a teardrop kind of shape that ended on a, in a point with the cylinder. and. At first, I had just a regular cylinder there, and I tried to do a whole bunch of cuts on it, but I couldn't get that to work, so I just scrapped that all together. And then I ended up just making a uh, rounded edge matching on the cylinder, and then two angles going into the um, from the, each, each edge on each side um, in the meeting here. And I just extruded that triangular shape down, and then filled it a little bit. Um, and then on the ends, they also had two uh, holes that I mentioned earlier. Uh, this one was a little bit deeper than the other one, and it was kind of tricky to measure uh, this one because the uh, caliper didn't exactly fit in there. I had to um, kind of get it at a weird angle to get it all the way down. Uh, and this is an overview of it. After finishing everything, I just basically went through and filled it, the whole shape. And then Michael's going to go through the uh, connecting rod. Uh, well, the connecting rod is uh, really simple. It's just comprised of two parts. You have the uh, you have the bottom part and the top part. Uh, the bottom part was the easier of the two to model. Uh, all I did was make a solid block and then uh, cut out material from it uh, until I had the desired shape. And then uh, once I had that shape, I made the cut here. And it's the exact same cut on the other side. Uh, and once I was through with that, I made the cut right here. And then I made the two holes. And the hardest part for the, uh, to model the bottom part was uh, making these grooves right here and right here. Uh, but I realized that uh, they were technically the same, uh, even though this one's a little bit uh, lower than this one. So once I got this shape done, all I did was uh, just make it smaller and put it on the other side. Uh, the top part was the hardest part to make, um, as it not only had like a bunch of extrudes or uh, different uh, cuts, but it also has that groove uh, in the middle, and that groove was the hardest uh, part to model. Actually, um, in this view, I have a sectioned view of um, the different angles. Like this angle and this angle uh, are two totally different angles. And I had to uh, do a bunch of math to figure out those angles, uh, and a bunch of different measurements. Uh, but after I found that out, the top part was pretty simple to finish. Uh, and afterwards, to mo uh, to modify this part, um, we basically just added uh, four different bars going through the middle uh, to make it stronger. Uh, and that was a little tricky at first to make because I couldn't really do a uh, rib or four ribs. 
uh, I had to uh, create uh, four rectangle shapes uh, and then extrude it from the inside and out. Uh, but once that was done, it was pretty simple. So, yeah. And this is a better view of what it looked like before and after. So, yeah, that's a good idea. 